I really felt like I was just kind of trapped in, in like a really just like defective body. Well, I first got Stevie it was because I was feeling like super, super depressed. Um, I had just gotten diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis and that really took away what I did best, which was help people um, and do things for people um, and just be physically active and all that stuff. So, you know, when I was diagnosed, I felt pretty hopeless. I felt like I didn't really have a purpose anymore because my doctors were like, hey, you have to stop, you know, exercising so hard, you have to stop doing, you know, lifting things and stuff like that. And I really felt like I was just kind of trapped. It was suggested to me that, you know, maybe, you know, maybe get a dog, you know, maybe get somebody who, who needs to depend on you, you know, and that, that's what Stevie was when, we, when I, when I got her, I got her and, you know, she was just a puppy and she was just full of energy and really wanted to be like, you know, I need you. I need you to do things for me. I, I want you to walk me. And it was, you know, even just walking her is fun. You know, spending time with her, getting her food, that's really helpful to me because it gives me a sense of Russ, someone depends on you. Russ, you know, you can really do something for somebody else. Or, you know, in a sense, Stevie, like an animal, you can do something for her. And, you know, she returns that love unconditionally. And no matter what, if I'm having a really crappy day, she'll come and she, you know, wants to brighten my day. If I'm having a good day, she wants to brighten it more. If I'm feeling sad, she just wants to cuddle. And that's, that's something that I don't think a lot of people understand about me personally. She's like my best friend. She's the person who really understands me out of everybody else, you know? She, she really gets, you know, when I'm feeling sad, and she'll come over and she'll give me kisses if she wants to play. You know, she's definitely somebody who gives me purpose. The other treatments I have to get really are, they're, they're the worst, man. Um, you know, I have to sit in an infusion center with people who are, you know, dying of cancer. You know, people who have lymphoma, people who have these horrible diseases and we have to sit there for like three hours at a time getting poison pumped into our veins. And that makes you feel like crap once you, once you, you know, leave. Uh, you know, I have to deal with side effects of my, of my treatment all the time. You know, it's, it's changed my personality, uh, I, I think, a little bit. It's definitely changed the person, not really the person I am, but it's changed how I react to things, you know. Uh, I am a lot more quicker to anger. Than, than I would have been, you know. After my medicine, I can just feel all, all the anger and all this poison that they're putting into my body to help my body, and it just expels itself in anger. And it's just, I don't, it's not helpful to me, you know, but having her, it helps me so much better. It makes me feel me, as opposed to sitting there and looking at people who are dying, people who are inflicted with diseases. That doesn't help me. I think, you know, an animal, you don't have to tell your animal, hey, I'm having a bad day. Hey, I'm depressed. Hey, I'm feeling sad. Your animal picks up on that. 
as soon as you walk through the door. Your animal picks that vibe off of you and they can just meet that need that you have while you meet their needs. It's a symbiotic relationship. And that's something that's really, really important to me. That I don't have to victimize myself. I don't have to be sad about anything or, you know, visibly sad. I don't have to tell anyone, like, I'm feeling bad today. My dog understands. She gets it. And she's just like, hey, what can I do for you?